Hey guys, welcome to Lawyer Tips. In today's video, we'll be looking at some of the authorization stops. Only the users that have created the products can actually edit or delete the product, otherwise they cannot. But the super admin can edit and delete all the products. And we haven't added creator ID on the products table. So we'll do that today and we'll be adding authorization logic using Laravel policies. And now I would like you to introduce to this video sponsor, which is Cloudways. Cloudways is a managed cloud hosting platform which focuses on your business and avoid all the web hosting hassles. Cloudways will take care of the server setup for you. And you can go live in minutes using the Cloudways. You can select any one of these applications like WordPress, Laravel, PHP, etc. And you can host those in any one of these server like DigitalOcean, AWS, Vulture, Google Cloud or Linode and also you can scale your server size as you need using the simple and easy user interface. You can use the link below to subscribe to Cloudways and if you do so you will get $15 as a credit and you can use that $15 to set up a base server and it will last you almost a month which means that you are getting one month free. Now let's get started. Okay first of all we'll go here in the e-commerce project and here let us create a migration over here let us add creator id on the products table and you'll also see how to add additional fields to our products using a migration in this video so we'll say psp artisan make migration add creator id column on products table and we'll say dash dash table equals to products and if we do it like this then it will create a migration and here in the migrations file this table will be automatically filled now whatever we write code inside this block it will be added to the products table so here we'll say table for an id and we'll say here creator id like this and it will be constrained to users table and let's say whenever we run rollback then we want to drop that foreign key so we'll say table foreign so here it will be let's say drop foreign so drop foreign ID constraint and here we'll pass column name which is creator ID so after this we can just run PSP artisan migrate and hit enter and it is saying that that cannot add a foreign key constraint because yeah of course we need to make this nullable because we are adding it a little bit later so we had to write here nullable but after we run this then this schema has already run only the foreign key has not been created but if we try to run it this one more time suppose let's say nullable like this and if i try to again run it so if i just run it then it will say that the column is already existing on the table so first of all let us just duplicate this over here and here let me just say here let's say drop column we'll drop this column because when we ran that migration this migration then it has already created the column but when creating the foreign key it failed so this thing has created so we'll first drop it and we'll run this okay this is the null label and after it will be constrained so now we'll again run php artisan migrate now it is run successfully so we need to remove this but whenever you are doing then just write this with a null label field then it should not throw any error now if i come here in this database and if i refresh over here then you'll see here creator id is present over here now let us show the creator over here okay so there aren't creators set on this so let me just refresh one more time and there are 14 so let's say first there are first three let's say up to here one two three four five six and up to let's say up to the seven let's say one and up to here let's say two because we know that there are two users on our table so we'll just write here one and two and we'll just refresh over here okay now let us go on the product and let us create a relationship okay here so let's say public function relationship creator and it will be a belongs to relationship and we'll return this belongs to let's say user class and creator id whatever the foreign key relationship is now let us go to the users and also let us create the products relationship products and it will be has many relationship has many and we'll say return this has many 
product class and creator id like this a user can have many products and a product belongs to a creator now let us go to product controller and here so let us just write here let's say creator id and here we'll say with creator id and name we only want name of the user so we have to write id and name now we'll go here in the products less index then we need to show here so let us show here okay okay in the table here is this let me just zoom it little bit so here created at let us say created date and created by so here will be created date and i'll duplicate this created by and here will be creator id and here we'll say this creator dot name after this let me save it and refresh it is showing some error so let me run npm runs i think i have ran npm run watch so item dot creator dot name so here if we just look here okay so we have done it over here creator id with creator but we have passed here product resource so here we need to pass that so here after this let me just say here creator id and this let's say when not null creator id and here will be creator and let's say new user resource this when loaded creator so whenever this relationship is loaded then only show this so now i'll refresh here then i'll be able to see this created by editor editor and super admin and this created date but now we can also see all this editor edit deletes everything even if we are logged in as the editor we only want these things to be visible if a user has access to it so this is done by editor then yes editor can see yeah currently the user is editor but it is a super admin so user the editor should not be able to see it so for that if we go here in the products controller we already have some this kind of permissions that we have already defined whenever we see date the database but we want more over here if we see here in the so here in the authorization section in the policy then so let me just take it to the top this authorization writing policies you can see all the documentation over here i'll just do it over here so here let us create a policy first it will be easier if we write a policy okay php artisan make policy and we'll say product policy dash dash model and we'll pass product the model name over here and hit enter after this the policy has already been created inside this app policies folder if we go here inside where is the policies app policies and product policy okay we only want that kind of permission on the edit and delete so let us delete everything other than edit and delete so this is view create and this is the update we'll add this update and we'll remove these things comment also this is the delete we'll just keep it as it is and remove these things okay okay now here we'll check so we'll we'll just uh, check these permissions also over here okay so here i'll say if dollar user id is not equal to dollar product creator id if user id is not creator id then we'll say return false this user id is the currently authenticated id okay inside the policy we always get the authenticated user as a first parameter and the second will be the model so user id is not equal to from the product if they are not equal which means that if the user hasn't created the product then we'll just return false and here we'll say if dollar user can so here edit and delete so here edit and update so here can edit product so we'll write here can edit product then return true like this we'll do it like this. so both of these will be handled by this now here instead of this we can just do like this edit product this is the syntax how we can pass to the middleware the policy okay 
if you don't know then you can just check here in the documentation then you will easily find that so here edit product will check here if product does not belong to the user it will return false otherwise it will check if they have actually the permission to edit the product then it will return true after this so we'll do the same thing over here like this and instead of edit we'll say delete over here and here we'll say like this this thing will be executed on edit and update method and this thing will be executed on the destroy method okay this thing has been done and now actually this is the actual permission that we have so suppose let's say okay here so sorry here if i reload then everything is okay okay so here this is currently the user is editor and if i try to edit this then it is saying this action is unauthorized okay sorry instead of edit it must be update over here because if you see here the method name is update okay so we need to write here update so here again if i try to click on edit then it is successfully open but if i just go back and try to edit the super admin post then the user is not authorized and again if i try to delete this also then also the user is not authorized okay but let's say if the editor want to edit his or her own post then they are allowed to do so so after this this is the actual but we don't want this editor delete to be visible who doesn't have any permission to do so so for that we have to go here in the product resource and here we have this can and here we are doing it like this so instead of this we'll say update and delete like this sorry not like this but can we can do like this update delete so in the middle where we have to do it like this but in the model this is the model so we have to do it like this so here update like this okay and here if we pass this then it will not work so let me just show you this this will act like a model so here dollar this but this is actually the instance of this product resource internally laravel will just hijack the underscore underscore magic method and it will just act as the model now if i just refresh over here okay guys so everything will be hidden so instead of this there is this resource so the, this resource is the actual model so here this resource is the actual model okay now if i do it and refresh then you can see here the editor can see this edit and delete buttons but inside of the super admin the editor cannot see because here she cannot edit or delete the post they are not authorized to do so now let me go log out and log in as admin which is a super admin of course and if i go here in the products then here she can see the admin can see all the edit and delete and here if you see here in the rules and inside the editor i have already given some permissions regarding this view product module and this products module so everything i have given permission to the editor so the editor was able to view the products also one thing that we need to do is whenever we are creating the product we want to set the creator id so for that let us go to product controller and store okay here is the save data and we are also using the same save data over here so let us go inside here and we'll know whether it is edit or delete by looking at this if this is a model then it is edit otherwise it is a create so if this is null then it is a create so here i'll say if not this product then we'll say here data creator id will be dollar request request is this sorry request is this is a request request we have this user method and on the user i can call id so this is a currently authenticated user this is by default present on each and every request that we create so like this and okay so inside the products in a new let me create a new product over here this f a c e r e and random one okay f a c e r e and click on active and save now you can see here this is over here okay f a c e r e and you can see here the created by super admin because we are currently logged in as super admin okay and after this let us do a final thing let us go on the product factory and let us add here creator id and here we'll say user and factory 
now whenever we create a product then this created id will be automatically set or we can pass it from the factory itself so guys in today's video we learned how to authorize a particular user and we learned how to combine the spacy permissions with laravel policies so that's it for this video guys thank you for watching have a great day bye